The old timers uh, that I fished with when I was 10 or 12 years old used to tell me I was wasting my time fishing for stripers because I'd go out sometimes two or three days without catching a three pound schoolie. And I, all I had to do was go down on the first pier and drop a line and fill a half galvanized bucket with winter flounder, which were there almost year round, to tog, white perch, and so they thought I was wasting my time. It was something because it was exclusive and it, because it was special, uh, I did it. There's another fish right behind me. Sometimes you have to, you know, when they're, when they're acting normal. Yeah. I'll just take that fish and just screech it right across the top and stop it. And of course, it's doing something different than the other baits. Right. Come on, eat it. Mike Roy and Charlie Source, two men of different generations and of different experiences. Charlie from an era where reading water was pure art, at a time when one's depiction of the habitat was forged purely in the imagination of hardline core tenants and of secrecy above all else. When a 50 pound fish was a secret and not a marketing asset. When techniques and terminology were specialized and proprietary to their respective fisheries. Mike comes from the era of advanced technology and of acquiring every data point possible before making an adjustment. Of the rapid technical assimilation afforded only by the internet. Of hybridized games, musky plugs, and key style live bait fishing. But however disparate in execution the old and new schools may be, those who carry the sport of fishing within them are far more similar than they are different. You know, in, in today's business, I feel sorry for the guys like yourself who have to make a living. You've got little places where you're going to bring someone for two or three fish. With the, with the equipment that you have on your boat today, you're able to stay there for a while, pick a few fish. And what I've been doing is if someone's coming, I see him a half a mile off. I'm out of there. Yeah. I'm out of there. But there were two fish here, three fish here, one fish there. And so you kind of kept that under your hat. But today, if you, if you don't tell people what you're doing, they don't know you exist. So if you're not showing that you're catching fish, they'll say, well, Mike, I didn't see him with a 40 pounder. This guy had one. I think the issue is when you go and you put the picture up or you say, hey, there's fish all over Bartlett's Reef right now. Now, if we went and we caught two big fish here this morning, that's our, like, we know that. Yeah. But if we blast that to the world, then that's when the spot burning or the, the issue takes place. Generations have different trends and leanings, but within each are those who uphold the core beliefs and values of their culture. Techniques and technology may evolve, lines may become thinner, boats more seaworthy, and fish more sparse. But be they an octogenarian or a 28-year-old up-and-comer, both are salty, and both value secretive substance over any curated veneer. He's right behind me. He just came right up behind the bait. When I caught fish, nobody got to see him. They were hidden, and guys who worked with the other guy come over and say, hey, can we see a fish? We don't have any. He said, come on, we saw the light, you know, because you never use running lights to let anybody know where you were. He said, we saw the lights. I said, well, we had some tangles. And so they left, and then Sabatowski came over and he said, kid, do you get any fish tonight? I said, we got a few. He said, pull the canvas back. And I just, he said, it's okay. Pull the canvas back. He said, I know you're not one of those guys that runs over. We're making a living here, and some Yahoo catches his first 40 and hangs it up, and they have a party on the dock and embarrasses all these men who are trying to make a living. This size fish is having a tough. Yeah, he's having a tough time, having a tough time eating this big bait. Tough 
the trouble. Yes. Every culture has its intrinsic positives and negatives. Sport fishing is no different. And contrary to its often cartoonish mainstream portrayal, the core of sport fishing culture revolves around what is known as old school values. Time, approach, knowledge. Be tight-lipped, talk to people, but also hold your cards tight. And above all else, it's always about the fish. It always has been, and it always will be.